solving word problems involving ratios. Ratios are used to compare the relative values of numbers or quantities or figures or what have you. You can check my videos on uh, fraction, ratios, proportions and percentages to have a better understanding of what these terms are. But today I want to quickly explain how to solve word problems that involves ratio. And here I have an example. This is a word problem. Now, it's a word problem because you are expected to derive a mathematical equation or an expression from this sentence, which means that you need a proper understanding and interpretation of whatever you have been given. Now, three friends, I'm sorry to use real names because I know a lot of students, when you start seeing X, Y, and Z, that's where the problem comes in. But yes, we cannot continue to write, for instance, you cannot tell your calculator, Mr. Jagbe plus Mr. Onikwan plus whatever, and somebody else in another country with another language uh, use something else. So for the sake of uh, uh, uniformity, you know, we can use X, Y, Z, and you know anytime, anywhere you are, it's the same. But for this example, we have three friends, Mr. Jagbe, Mr. Onikwanu, and Mr. Subiru, invested 100,000 Naira in a business in a ratio 3 to f 3 to 4. This is read as 3 ratio 3 ratio 4, which is 3 to 3 to 4. How much did each friend invest? Now, amount invested, amount invested is uh, 100,000 Naira. 100,000. Now, their ratio of investment this is how a good student writes out the parameters given. If you don't want to mix things up, you don't just go straight to the answer. Is 3 ratio 3 ratio 4, or you say 3 to 3 to 4, which means somebody contributed, invested three parts of the whole, which is 100,000 Naira. The other person contributed three, and the next person contributed four. In this case, Mr. Jagbe contributed three, parts of 100,000, Mr. Onipal contributed three parts of 100,000, while Mr. Subiru contributed four parts of 100,000 Naira. So how do you calculate how much each friend invested? So we have the total part now. The total number of parts is 3 plus 3 plus 4, which equals to 10. Now, we have 10 parts in this particular situation. That means if Mr. Ajagbe invested three, three parts, that's 3 out of 10. That means Mr. Ajagbe, Mr. Ajagbe invested 3 out of 10, which in this case, we are saying 3 over 10 of 100,000 Naira. So, zero cancel zero, we have uh, 30,000 Naira. That means Mr. Jagbe invested 30,000 Naira. Same thing with Mr. Unipanu. Mr. Unipanu also invested 3 out of 10. So, he also invested 30,000 Naira. But now, Mr. Subeiru. Mr. Subeiru, note that if you are solving this for an examination, you can't do this, and I'm just doing this to save time. Now, Mr. Subeiru invested, invested 4 out of 10, which means he invested 4 over 10 multiplied by 100,000 naira. 0 cancels 0, and he has 40,000 naira. Which means each of them invested a bit, which means Mr. Jagbe invested 30,000 Naira, Mr. Onipan invested 30,000 Naira, while Mr. Subiru also invested 40,000 Naira. When you add all this together, you get your 100,000 Naira. Alternatively, another way you can do this, alternatively, is to, is to divide the whole into parts. You divide the whole into parts, 
in this case, we have a, how many parts? We have 10 parts and we have 100,000 Naira. So we can divide 100,000 Naira by 10 and that gives us 10,000 Naira. That means each part of contribution is 10,000 Naira. Then we now multiply by the ratio of investment or maybe ratio of sharing, whatever the question says. Ratio of, uh, multiply by ratio of investment, which in this case is 3 ratio 3 ratio 4. That means the person that we invested with ratio 3 will have 3 multiplied by 10,000 Naira, which equals to 30,000 Naira. That's uh, Mr. Jagbe. Likewise, the other friend also invested 3 multiplied by 10,000 Naira, which equals to 30,000 Naira. That's uh, Mr. Onikwan. And the last person invested four, that's four multiplied by 10,000 Naira, which equals to 40,000 Naira. You see, either way you get the same answer. What you just need is to have a proper understanding so that you can be able to interpret it appropriately. I'll draw another example quickly. So, a site contractor for Chendro and Sons Construction Company supplied uh, 200 kg, 1,000 kg, and 1,002 kg of gravel, sand, and cement, respectively. Respectively means, as it appears, that means 200 kg of gravel, 1,000 kg of sand, and 1,002 kg of uh, cement to the site bricklayers. If the ratio of gravel, sand, and cement required given, is given as 2 to 4 to 6. That means what the bricklayer needs of this material is in this ratio, 2 to 4 to 6. The first question says, what quantity of each material is needed? Now, we have uh, gravel. I have sand. Then we have cement. The ratio of each required is given as uh, ratio required is given as 2 ratio 4 ratio 6 so this question is saying what quantity of each material is required we can reduce this to the smallest ratio possible because uh, I think they are all multiples of each other so this is 1 2 divided by 2 is 1 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that means uh, ratio 1, 2 to 3. And the site contractor supplied, quantity supplied, supplied, uh, we supplied 200 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms of this, and we have 1,002 kilograms. So what's uh, we are looking for now is what quantity of each material is required. We need them in ratio 1, 2, 3, which means we need twice as much sand as gravel, and we need thrice as much uh, cement as uh, gravel. So if this is 1, 200 is 1, we need uh, 200 kilograms of gravel. For sand is 2, 2 times of gravel, which is 200 multiplied by 2, that will be 400 kilograms. Then for cement, we need three times of gravel. That will be 300 multiplied by 200, which is 600 kilograms. So this is uh, the quantity required. Quantity. So now let's try this. How much in excess of each material is supplied? Let me write it out again. I have gravel, sand, and uh, cement. I have calculated the um, amount required to be 200 kilograms, 400 kilograms, and 600 kilograms in ratio 1, ratio 2, ratio 3. This is the uh, amount required. We say quantity required. So now we are looking for how much in excess of which material is supplied. This is the quantity supplied. Quantity supplied, we have um, this 200 kilograms of gravel was supplied, 
1,000 kilograms of sand was supplied and 1,200 kilograms of cement was supplied. So now we are looking for how much in excess of each material is supplied. What we simply do is to take away the quantity supplied from, we take away the amount required from the quantity supplied. So now excess supply will be 200 minus 200 kilogram in the case of gravel, which will leave us with nothing, that's zero kilogram. Here will be 1,000 kilogram minus 400 kilogram in this case of sand, which will be 600 kilograms. Then 1,002 kilogram minus 600 kilogram for cement. That would also be 600 kilograms. So, zero kilogram of gravel was supplied in excess. That means they actually supplied what was required. The sand. Okay, so we have. Uh, what is the ratio of each material supplied in excess? Now, um, gravel was not supplied in excess, so we have no business with that. Ratio of uh, material supplied in excess. Ratio of material supplied in excess. Of material in excess. So we have no business with this because uh, gravel was not supplied in excess. Now, sand, 600 kilogram, cement, 600 kilogram. So what we are doing now is, what's the ratio of sand to cement? 600, 600. That's same thing. So we have a one ratio, one. Another way to do that is, remember that one part was 200 kilogram. So now we have 300 kilogram, which means 600 divided by 200 kilogram, we have three. Same here, 3 ratio 3. 3 ratio 3 is the same thing as 1 ratio 1. So what we are saying is, the quantity of sand and cement supplied in excess is the same. And don't forget, that was what I started with. The ratio is used to compare the relative quantities of numbers, the relative values of numbers or quantities to, in some allocation problems or sharing or distribution, or whatever problems. I want to believe that video has helped you so you can share with your friends, like my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.